The First Battle of Ypres was a battle of the First World War, fought on the Western Front around Ypres, in West Flanders, Belgium. The battle was part of the First Battle of Flanders, in which German, French, Belgian armies and the British Expeditionary Force fought from Arras in France to Newport on the Belgian coast, from 10 October to mid-November. The battles at Ypres began at the end of the race to the sea, reciprocal attempts by the German and Franco-British armies to advance past the northern flank of their opponents. North of Ypres, the fighting continued in the Battle of the Isar, between the German 4th Army, the Belgian Army and French Marines. The fighting has been divided into five stages, an encounter battle from 19 to 21 October, the Battle of Longemark from 21 to 24 October, the battles at La Bessée and Armentier to the 2nd of November, coincident with more allied attacks at Ypres and the Battle of Gelevelt, a fourth phase with the last big German offensive, which culminated at the Battle of non on on the 11th of November, then local operations which faded out in late November. Brigadier General James Edmonds, the British official historian, wrote in the history of the Great War, that the Second Corps battle at La Versailles could be taken as separate but that the battles from Armentier to Mazines and Ypres, were better understood as one battle in two parts, an offensive by three corps and the cavalry corps from 12 to 18 October against which the Germans retired and an offensive by the German 6th Army and 4th Army from 19 October to the 2nd of November, which from 30 October, took place mainly north of the Lys, when the battles of Armentier and Mazines merged with the battles of Ypres. Attacks by the Bif the Belgians and the French 8th Army in Belgium made little progress beyond Ypres. The German 4th and 6th Armies took small amounts of ground, at great cost to both sides, during the Battle of the Isar and further south at Ypres. General Erich von Falkenhayn, head of the Oberste Heeresleitung, then tried a limited offensive to capture Ypres and Mont Kemmel, from 19 October to the 22nd of November. Neither side had moved forces to Flanders fast enough to obtain a decisive victory and by November both sides were exhausted. The armies were short of ammunition, suffering from low morale and some infantry units refused orders. The autumn battles in Flanders had become static, attrition operations, unlike the battles of manoeuvre in the summer. French, British and Belgian troops in improvised field defences, repulsed German attacks for four weeks. From 21 to 23 October, German reservists had made mass attacks at Longemark, with losses of up to 70%, to little effect. Warfare between mass armies, equipped with the weapons of the Industrial Revolution and its later developments, proved to be indecisive, because field fortifications neutralized many classes of offensive weapon. The defensive firepower of artillery and machine guns dominated the battlefield and the ability of the armies to supply themselves and replace casualties prolonged battles for weeks. 34 German divisions fought in the Flanders battles, against 12 French, 9 British and 6 Belgian divisions, along with marines and dismounted cavalry. Over the winter, Falkenhayn reconsidered Germany's strategy because Wernicktung strategy and the imposition of a dictated peace on France and Russia had exceeded German resources. Falkenhayn devised a new strategy to detach either Russia or France from the Allied coalition through diplomacy as well as military action. A strategy of attrition would make the cost of the war too great for the Allies, until one dropped out and made a separate peace. The remaining belligerents would have to negotiate or face the Germans concentrated on the remaining front, which would be sufficient for Germany to inflict a decisive defeat. Chapter 1 Background Chapter 1 Section 1 Strategic Developments Chapter 1 Section 1 Subsection 2 Eastern Front On the 9th of October, the first German offensive against Warsaw began with the battles of Warsaw and Ivangorod. Four days later, Peshemisel was relieved by the advancing Austro-Hungarians and the Battle of Kiro the 13th October to the 2nd November, began in Galicia. Chernowitz in Bukovina was re-occupied by the Austro-Hungarian army on the 22nd of August and then lost again to the Russian army on the 28th of October. On the 29th of October, the Ottoman Empire commenced hostilities against Russia, when Turkish warships bombarded Odessa, Sevastopol, and Theodosia. 
Next day Stanislaw in Galicia was taken by Russian forces and the Serbian army began a retreat from the line of the Dina. On the 4th of November, the Russian army crossed the frontier of Turkey in Asia and seized Azap. Britain and France declared war on Turkey on 5 November and next day, Kupri Kenny in Armenia was captured, during the Bergman offensive by the Russian army. On 10 October, Peshemisel was surrounded again by the Russian army, beginning the second siege, Memel in East Prussia was occupied by the Russians a day later. Kupri Kenny was recaptured by the Ottoman army on 14 November, the Sultan proclaimed jihad, next day the Battle of Krakow began and the second Russian invasion of North Hungary commenced. The second German offensive against Warsaw opened with the Battle of Ludz. Chapter 1 Section 1 Subsection 3 Great Retreat The Great Retreat was a long withdrawal by the Franco-British armies to the Marne, from 24 August, the 28th of September 1914, after the success of the German armies in the Battle of the Frontiers. After the defeat of the French Fifth Army at the Battle of Charleroi and the Biff in the Battle of Mons, both armies made a rapid retreat to avoid envelopment. A counter-offensive by the French and the Biff at the First Battle of Guise, failed to end the German advance and the Franco-British retreat continued beyond the Marne. From 5 to 12 September, the First Battle of the Marne ended the retreat and forced the German armies to retire towards the Aisne River, where the First Battle of the Aisne was fought from 13 to 28 September. Chapter 1 Section 2 – Tactical Developments Chapter 1 Section 2 Subsection 2 Flanders After the retreat of the French Fifth Army and the Biff, local operations took place from August to October. General Fournier was ordered on 25 August to defend the fortress at Mabouge, which was surrounded two days later by the German 7 Reserve Corps. Mabouge was defended by 14 forts, a garrison of 30,000 French territorials and circa 10,000 French, British and Belgian stragglers. The fortress blocked the main Cologne-Paris rail line, leaving only the line from Trier to Liege, Brussels, Valenciennes and Cambrai opened to the Germans, which was needed to carry supplies southward to the armies on the Aisne and transport troops of the 6th Army northwards from Lorraine to Flanders. On 7 September, the garrison surrendered, after super-heavy artillery from the siege of Nama demolished the forts. The Germans took 32,692 prisoners and captured 450 guns. Small detachments of the Belgian, French and British armies conducted operations in Belgium and northern France, against German cavalry and Jaeger. On 27 August, a squadron of the Royal Naval Air Service flew to Ostend, for reconnaissance sorties between Bruges, Ghent, and Ypres. Royal Marines landed at Dunkirk on the night of 19-20 September and on 28 September, a battalion occupied Lille. The rest of the brigade occupied Castle on 30 September and scouted the country in motor cars, and Rose Armoured Car Section was created, by fitting vehicles with bulletproof steel. On 2 October, the Marine Brigade was sent to Antwerp, followed by the rest of the 63rd Division on 6 October, having landed at Dunkirk on the night of 4-5 October. From 6-7 October, the 7th Division, and the 3rd Cavalry Division landed at Zeebrugge. Naval forces collected at Dover were formed into a separate unit, which became the Dover Patrol, to operate in the Channel and off the French-Belgian coast. Chapter 1 Section 2 Subsection 3 Biff In late September, Marshal Joseph Joffrey and Field Marshal John French discussed the transfer of the Biff from the Aisne to Flanders, to unify British forces on the continent, shorten the British lines of communication from England, and to defend Antwerp and the Channel ports. Despite the inconvenience of British troops crossing French lines of communication, when French forces were moving north after the Battle of the Aisne, Joffrey agreed subject to a proviso, that French would make individual British units available for operations as soon as they arrived. On the night of 1-2 of October, the transfer of the Biff from the Aisne front began in great secrecy. Marches were made at night and billeted troops were forbidden to venture outside in daylight. On 3 October, a German wireless message was intercepted, 
which showed that the BIF was still believed to be on the AIM 2 core move from the night of 3 the 4th of October and 3 core followed from 6 October, leaving a brigade behind with I core, which stayed until the night of 13 the 14th of October. Two corps arrived around Abbeville from 8 to 9 October and concentrated to the northeast around Gen Iveni, Gesjart, Le Boisel, and Ray, preparatory to an advance on Bethune. The 2nd Cavalry Division arrived at St. Paul and Aidon on 9 October and the 1st Cavalry Division arrived a day later. GHQ left Ferre and Tardanois and arrived at St. Omar on 13 October. Three corps began to assemble around St. Omer and Haysbrook on the 11th of October, then moved behind the left flank of two corps, to advance on Bayol and Armentier. I corps arrived at Haysbrook on the 19th of October and moved eastwards to Ypres. Chapter 1 Section 2 Subsection 4 Race to the Sea After a tour of the front on the 15th of September, the new chief of the German general staff, General Erich von Falkenhayn planned to continue the withdrawal of the right flank of the German armies in France from the Aisne, to gain time for a strategic regrouping, by moving the 6th Army from Lorraine. A decisive result, was intended to come from the offensive of the 6th Army but on 18 September, French attacks endangered the German northern flank instead and the 6th Army used the first units from Lorraine to repulse the French as a preliminary. The French used undamaged rail and communications networks, to move troops faster than the Germans but neither side could begin a decisive attack, having to send units forward piecemeal, against reciprocal attacks of the opponent, in the race to the sea a German attack on 24 September, forced the French onto the defensive and Joffrey reinforced the northern flank of the Second Army. As Bif units arrived, operations began piecemeal on the northern flank, the Belgian army refused a request by Joffrey to leave the national redoubt of Belgium and sortie against German communications. A Franco-British offensive was substituted towards Lille and Antwerp. The Allied troops managed to advance towards Lille and the Lys River but were stopped by German attacks in the opposite direction on 20 October. The race ended on the Belgian coast around 17 October, when the last open area from Dichmauder to the North Sea, was occupied by Belgian troops withdrawing from Antwerp after the siege of Antwerp. The outflanking attempts resulted in indecisive encounter battles throughout Artois and Flanders, at the Battle of La Bassée, the Battle of Mazines and the Battle of Armentières. Chapter 2, Prelude Chapter 2 Section 1, Terrain Northeast France and the southwest Belgium are known as Flanders. West of a line between Arras and Calais in the northwest are chalk downlands, covered with soil sufficient for arable farming. East of the line, the land declines in a series of spurs into the Flanders Plain, bounded by canals linking Douai, Bethune, St. Omer, and Calais. To the southeast, canals run between Lens, Lille, Roubaix, and Courtrai, the Lys River from Courtrai to Ghent and to the northwest lies the sea. The plain is almost flat, apart from a line of low hills from Castle, eastwards to Mont des Cats, Mont Noir, Mont Rouge, Skirpenberg, and Mont Kemmel. From Kemmel, a low ridge lies to the northeast, declining in elevation past Ypres through Whitecheat, Gaelevelt and Passchendaele, curving north then northwest to Dichmauder where it merges with the plain. A coastal strip is about 10 miles wide, near sea level and fringed by sand dunes. Inland the ground is mainly meadow, cut by canals, dikes, drainage ditches and roads built up on causeways. The Lys, Isar and Upper Skelt are canalized and between them the water level underground is close to the surface, rises further in the autumn and fills any dip, the sides of which then collapse. The ground surface quickly turns to a consistency of cream cheese and on the coast movement is confined to roads, except during frosts out in the rest of the Flanders Plain were woods and small fields, divided by hedgerows planted with trees and fields cultivated from small villages and farms. The terrain was difficult for infantry operations because of the lack of observation, impossible for mounted action because of the many obstructions and awkward for artillery because of the limited view. South of La Bassée Canal around Lens and Bethune was a coal mining district full of slag heaps, 
pit heads and miners' houses. North of the canal, the city of Lille, Toquang and Roubaix formed a manufacturing complex, with outlying industries at Armentier, Comines, Halouin and Menin, along the Lys River, with isolated sugar beet and alcohol refineries and a steel works near Air la Lys. Intervening areas were agricultural, with wide roads, which in France were built on shallow foundations or were unpaved mud tracks. Narrow pave roads ran along the frontier and inside Belgium. In France, the roads were closed by the local authorities during thaws to preserve the surface and marked by barriers Fermi's signs, which were ignored by British lorry drivers. The difficulty of movement after the end of summer absorbed much of the labor available on road maintenance, leaving field defenses to be built by frontline soldiers. Chapter 2 Section 2 Tactics In October, Herbert Kitchener, the British Secretary of State for War, forecast a long war and placed orders for the manufacture of a large number of field, medium and heavy guns and howitzers, sufficient to equip a 24-division army. The order was soon increased by the war office but the rate of shell manufacture had an immediate effect on operations. While the BIF was still on the aim front, ammunition production for field guns and howitzers was 10,000 shells a month and only 100 shells per month were being manufactured for 60-pounder guns, the war office sent another 101 heavy guns to France during October. As the contending armies moved north into Flanders, the flat terrain and obstructed view, caused by the number of buildings, industrial concerns, tree foliage and field boundaries, forced changes in British artillery methods. Lack of observation was remedied in part by decentralizing artillery to infantry brigades and by locating the guns in the front line but this made them more vulnerable and several batteries were overrun in the fighting between Arras and Ypres. Devolving control of the guns made concentrated artillery fire difficult to arrange, because of a lack of field telephones and the obscuring of signal flags by mists and fog. Cooperation with French forces to share the British heavy artillery was implemented, and discussions with French gunners led to a synthesis of the French practice of firing a field artillery rafale before infantry moved to the attack and then ceasing fire, with the British preference for direct fire at observed targets, which was the beginning of the development of creeping barrages. During the advance of the Third Corps and an attack on Matron, the 4th Division issued divisional artillery orders, which stressed the concentration of the fire of the artillery, although during the battle the gunners fired on targets of opportunity, since German positions were so well camouflaged. As the fighting moved north into Belgian Flanders, the artillery found that shrapnel shells had little effect on buildings and called for high explosive ammunition. During a general attack on 18 October, the German defenders achieved a defensive success, due to the disorganized nature of the British attacks, which only succeeded where close artillery support was available. The unexpected strength of the German 4th Army opposite, compounded British failings, although the partly trained, poorly led and badly equipped German Reserve Corps suffered high casualties. German tactics developed during the battles around Ypres, with cavalry still effective during the early maneuvering, although just as hampered by hedges and fenced fields, railway lines and urban growth as the Allied cavalry, which made the ground far better suited to defensive battle. German accounts stress the accuracy of Allied sniper fire, which led troops to remove the spike from Pickelhauber helmets and for officers to carry rifles to be less conspicuous. Artillery remained the main infantry killer, particularly French 75mm field guns, firing shrapnel at ranges lower than 1,000 yards. Artillery in German reserve units was far less efficient due to lack of training and fire often fell short. In the lower ground between Ypres and the higher ground to the southeast and east, the ground was drained by many streams and ditches, divided into small fields with high hedges and ditches, roads were unpaved and the area was dotted with houses and farmsteads. Observation was limited by trees and open spaces could be commanded from covered positions and made untenable by small arms and artillery fire. As winter approached the views became more open as woods and copses were cut down by artillery bombardments and the ground became much softer, particularly in the lower lying areas. Chapter 2 Section 3 Plans The French, 
Belgian and British forces in Flanders had no organization for unified command but General Foch had been appointed Commandant Le Groupe des Armées du Nord on 4 October by Joffrey. The Belgian army managed to save 80,000 men from Antwerp and retire to the Yser and although not formally in command of British and Belgian forces, Foch obtained cooperation from both contingents. On 10 October, Foch and French agreed to combine French, British and Belgian forces north and east of Lille, from the list to the Scheldt. Foch planned a joint advance from Ypres to Newport, towards a line from Rousselara, Thouaut and Gistel, just south of Ostend. Foch intended to isolate the German Three Reserve Corps, which was advancing from Antwerp, from the main German force in Flanders. French and Belgian forces were to push the Germans back against the sea, as French and British forces turned southeast and closed up to the Lys River from Menin to Ghent, to cross the river and attack the northern flank of the German armies. Falkenhayn sent the 4th Army headquarters to Flanders, to take over the 3rd Reserve Corps and its heavy artillery, 20 batteries of heavy field howitzers, 12 batteries of 210mm howitzers and 6 batteries of 100mm guns, after the siege of Antwerp. The 22nd, 23, 26 and 27 Reserve Corps, of the six new Reserve Corps formed from volunteers after the outbreak of the war, were ordered from Germany to join the 3rd Reserve Corps on 8 October. The German Reserve Corps infantry were poorly trained and ill-equipped, but on 10 October, Falkenhayn issued a directive that the 4th Army was to cross the Isar, advance regardless of losses and isolate Dunkirk and Calais, then turn south towards St. Omer. With the 6th Army to the south, which was to deny the Allies an opportunity to establish a secure front and transfer troops to the north, the 4th Army was to inflict an annihilating blow on the French, Belgian and Bif forces in French and Belgian Flanders. Chapter 2 Section 4 Battle of the Yser. French, British and Belgian troops covered the Belgian and British withdrawal from Antwerp towards Ypres, and the Yser from Dixmaude to Newport, on a 35 km front. The new German 4th Army was ordered to capture Dunkirk and Calais, by attacking from the coast to the junction with the 6th Army. German attacks began on 18 October, coincident with the battles around Ypres and gained a foothold over the Yser at Turvit. The French 42nd Division at Newport detached a brigade to reinforce the Belgians and German heavy artillery was countered on the coast, by Allied ships under British command, which bombarded German artillery positions and forced the Germans to attack further inland. On 24 October, the Germans attacked 15 times and managed to cross the Isar on a 5 km front. The French sent the rest of the 42nd Division to the centre but on 26 October, the Belgian commander Felix Wielmans, ordered the Belgian army to retreat, until overruled by the Belgian king. Next day sluice gates on the coast at Newport were opened, which flooded the area between the Isar and the railway embankment, running north from Dixmaude. On 30 October, German troops crossed the embankment at Ramscapelle but as the waters rose, were forced back the following evening. The floods reduced the fighting to local operations, which diminished until the end of the battle on 30 November. Chapter 3 Battle Chapter 3 Section 1 Battle of Longemark The Battle of Longemark took place from 21 to 24 October, after an advance by the German 4th and 6th Armies which began on 19 October, as the left flank of the Bif began advancing towards Menin and Rousselara. On 20 October, Longemark, northeast of Ypres, was held by a French territorial unit, and the British Four Corps to the south. I Corps was due to arrive with orders to attack on the 21st of October. On the 21st of October, it had been cloudy and attempts to reconnoitre the German positions during the afternoon had not observed any German troops movements, the arrival of four new German reserve corps was discovered by prisoner statements, wireless interception and the increasing power of German attacks, five plus half infantry corps were now known to be north of the Lys, along with the four cavalry corps, against seven plus one-third British divisions and five Allied cavalry divisions. The British attack made early progress but the 4th Army began a series of attacks, albeit badly organized and poorly supported. 
the German 6th and 4th Armies attacked from Armentier to Mazines and Longemark. The British 4 Corps was attacked around Longemark, where the 7th Division was able to repulse German attacks and I Corps was able to make a short advance. Further north, French cavalry was pushed back to the Yser by the 23rd Reserve Corps and by nightfall was dug in from the junction with the British at Steenstra to the vicinity of Dichmauder, the boundary with the Belgian army. The British closed the gap with a small number of reinforcements and on 23 October, the French 9 Corps took over the north end of the Ypres salient, relieving I Corps with the 17th Division. Quartier Cabaret was recaptured by the 1st Division and the 2nd Division was relieved. Next day, I Corps had been relieved and the 7th Division lost Polygon Wood temporarily. The left flank of the 7th Division was taken over by the 2nd Division, which joined in the counterattack of the French 9 Corps on the northern flank towards Rousselara and Torhout, as the fighting further north on the Isar impeded German attacks around Ypres. German attacks were made on the right flank of the 7th Division at Gailevelt. The British sent the remains of I Corps to reinforce IV Corps. German attacks from 25 to 26 October were made further south, against the 7th Division on the Menin Road and on the 26th of October part of the line crumbled until reserves were scraped up to block the gap and avoid a rout. Chapter 3 Section 2 Battle of Gailevelt On the 28th of October, as the 4th Army attacks bogged down, Falkenhayn responded to the costly failures of the 4th and 6th Armies by ordering the armies to conduct holding attacks while a new force, Army Group Fabek was assembled from 15 Corps and the 2nd Bavarian Corps, the 26th Division and the 6th Bavarian Reserve Division, under the 13th Corps headquarters. The Army Group was rushed up to Dulemont and Wervik, the boundary between the 6th and 4th Armies, to attack towards Ypres and Poperanga. Strict economies were imposed on the 6th Army formations further south, to provide artillery ammunition for 250 heavy guns allotted to support an attack to the northwest, between Gailevelt and Mazines. The 15th Corps was to attack on the right flank, south of the Menin Ypres Road to the Comines Ypres Canal, and the main effort was to come from there to Guard Dieu by the 2nd Bavarian Corps, flanked by the 26th Division. On 29 October, attacks by the 27th Reserve Corps began against I Corps north of the Menin Road, at dawn in thick fog. By nightfall, the Gaelevelt crossroads had been lost and 600 British prisoners taken. French attacks further north, by the 17th Division, 18th Division and 31st Division recaptured Big Scoot and Cortecier Cabaret. Advances by Army Group Fabek to the southwest against I Corps and the dismounted Cavalry Corps further south, came to within 1.9 miles of Ypres along the Menin Road and brought the town into range of German artillery. On 30 October, German attacks by the 54th Reserve Division and the 30th Division, on the left flank of the Bivert Gailevelt, were repulsed but the British were pushed out of Zandvoort, Hollebeck and Hollebeck Chateau as German attacks on a line from Mazines to Whitecheat and St. Eve were repulsed. The British rallied opposite Zanvoord with French reinforcements and Bolfin's force a command improvised for the motley of troops. The Biff had many casualties and used all its reserves, but the French 9 Corps sent its last three battalions and retrieved the situation in the I Corps sector. On 31 October, German attacks near Gailevelt broke through until a counter-attack by the 2nd Worcestershire restored the situation. Chapter 3 Section 3 Battle of non -Boscan. The French 16 Corps reached the area from St. Eloy to Whitecheat on 1 November, to reinforce the Cavalry Corps and the 9th Corps attacked further north near Bekelier, which relieved the German pressure on both flanks of I Corps. By 3 November, Army Group Fabek had lost 17,250 men in five days and of 84 infantry battalions in the Bif which had come to France with about 1,000 officers and men each. 75 had fewer than 300 men, of which 18 battalions were under 100 men strong, despite receiving replacements up to 28 October. Foch planned an offensive towards Mazines and Longemark for 6 November, to expand the salient around Ypres. The attack was forestalled by German attacks on the flanks from 5 to 9 November. On 9 November, the Germans attacked the French and Belgians between Longemark and Dichmauder, 
forcing them back to the Yser, where the Belgians blew the crossings. After a lull, the German attacks resumed in great force from 10 to 11 November, mainly on the 4th Army front from Lonnemark to Dickschmauda. On 10 November, 12 plus half German divisions of the 4th and 6th Armies, Army Group Fabek and 27 Reserve Corps attacked from Nonbosken, and the edge of Polygon Wood, to Gailevelt and across the Menin Road to Shrewsbury Forest in the south. On the 11th of November, the Germans attacked from Mazines to Herenthage, Veldhook Woods, Nonbosken and Polygon Wood. Massed small arms fire repulsed German attacks between Polygon Wood and Veldhook. The German 3rd Division and 26th Division broke through to St. Eloy and advanced to Zwartelin, some 3,000 yards east of Ypres, where they were checked by the British 7th Cavalry Brigade. The remains of two corps from La Bassee, held a 3,500 yards front, with 7,800 men and 2,000 reserves against 25 German battalions with 17,500 men. The British were forced back by the German 4th Division and British counter-attacks were repulsed. Next day, an unprecedented bombardment fell on British positions in the south of the salient between Polygon Wood and Mazines. German troops broke through along the Menin Road but could not be supported and the advance was contained by the 13th of November. Both sides were exhausted by these efforts, German casualties around Ypres had reached about 80,000 men and beef losses, August, 30 November, were 89,964. The Belgian army had been reduced by half and the French had lost 385,000 men by September, 265,000 men having been killed by the end of the year. Chapter 3 Section 4, Local Operations, 12-22 November The weather became much colder, with rain from 12-14 to 14 November and a little snow on the 15th of November. Night frosts followed and on the 20th of November, the ground was covered by snow. Frostbite cases appeared and the physical strain increased, among troops occupying trenches half full of freezing water, falling asleep standing up and being sniped at and bombed from opposing trenches 100 yards away. On the 12th of November, a German attack surprised the French 9 Corps and the British 8th Division arrived at the front on the 13th of November and more attacks were made on the 2nd Corps front from 14 November. Between 15 to 22 November, I Corps was relieved by the French 9 and 16 Corps and the British line was reorganized. On the 16th of November, Foch agreed with French to take over the line from Zonnebeck to the Ypres-Comines Canal. The new British line ran 21 miles from Whitecheat to the La Bassee Canal at Givenchy. The Belgians held 15 miles and the French defended some 430 miles of the new Western Front. On the 17th of November, Albrecht ordered the 4th Army to cease its attacks, the 3rd Reserve Corps and 13 Corps were ordered to move the Eastern Front, which was discovered by the Allies on 20 November. Chapter 4, Aftermath Chapter 4 Section 1, Analysis Both sides had tried to advance after the open northern flank had disappeared, the Franco-British towards Lille in October, followed by attacks by the Biff, Belgians and a new French 8th Army in Belgium. The German 4th and 6th Armies took small amounts of ground at great cost to both sides at the Battle of the Isar and further south at the Battles of Ypres. Falkenhayn then tried a limited goal of capturing Ypres and Mont Kemmel, from 19 October to the 22nd of November. By the 8th of November, Falkenhayn had accepted that the coastal advance had failed and that taking Ypres was impossible. Neither side had moved forces to Flanders fast enough to obtain a decisive victory and both were exhausted, short of ammunition and suffering from collapses in morale, with some infantry units refusing orders. The autumn battles in Flanders had quickly become static, attrition operations, unlike the battles of Maneuver in the summer. French, British and Belgian troops in improvised field defences repulsed German attacks for four weeks in mutually costly attacks and counter-attacks. From 21 to 23 October, German reservists had made mass attacks at Longemark, with losses of up to 70% industrial warfare between mass armies had been indecisive, troops could only move forward over heaps of dead. 
Field fortifications had neutralized many classes of offensive weapon, and the defensive firepower of artillery and machine guns had dominated the battlefield, the ability of the armies to supply themselves and replace casualties kept battles going for weeks. The German armies engaged 34 divisions in the Flanders battles, the French 12, the British 9 and the Belgians 6, along with marines and dismounted cavalry. Falkenhayn reconsidered German strategy, Wernicktung's strategy and a dictated peace against France and Russia had been shown to be beyond German resources. Falkenhayn intended to detach Russia or France from the Allied coalition, by diplomatic as well as military action. A strategy of attrition, would make the cost of the war was too great for the Allies to bear, until one enemy negotiated an end to the war. The remaining belligerents would have to come to terms or face the German army concentrated on the remaining front and capable of obtaining a decisive victory. Chapter 4 Section 1 Subsection 2 Mad Minute In 2010, Jack Sheldon wrote that a mad minute of accurate rapid rifle fire, was held to have persuaded German troops that they were opposed by machine guns. This was a false notion, picked out of a translation of Die Schlacht und der und bei Herbst 1914, which the official historians used, in lieu of authoritative sources, during the writing of the 1914 volumes of the British History of the Great War, the first editions of which were published in 1922 and 1925. The British and French artillery fired as rapidly as they knew how and over every bush, hedge and fragment of wall floated a thin film of smoke, betraying a machine gun rattling out bullets. Sheldon wrote that the translation was inaccurate and ignored many references to the combined fire of rifles and machine guns. The British, most of whom had experience gained through long years of campaigning against cunning opponents in close country, let the attackers get to close range then, from hedges, houses and trees, opened up with withering rifle and machine gun fire from point-blank range. Typical of German regimental histories. The British fired short bursts at close range, to conserve ammunition. Sheldon also wrote that German troops knew the firing characteristics of machine guns and kept still until French Hotchkiss M1909 and Hotchkiss M1914 machine guns, which had ammunition in 24 and 30 round strips, were reloading. Chapter 4 Section 1 Subsection 3 Kindermord Sheldon wrote that a German description of the fate of the new reserve corps as a Kindermord, in a communique of the 11th of November 1914, was misleading. Claims that up to 75% of the manpower of the reserve corps were student volunteers, who attacked while singing Deutschland über Alles began a myth. After the war, most regiments which had fought in Flanders, referred to the singing of songs on the battlefield, a practice only plausible when used to identify units at night. In 1986, Unruh, wrote that 40,761 students had been enrolled in six reserve corps, four of which had been sent to Flanders, leaving a maximum of 30% of the reserve corps operating in Flanders made up of volunteers. Only 30% of German casualties at Ypres were young and inexperienced student reservists, others being active soldiers, older members of the Lantia and army reservists. Reserve Infantry Regiment 211 had 166 men in active service, 299 members of the reserve, which was composed of former soldiers from 23 to 28 years old, 970 volunteers who were inexperienced and probably 18 to 20 years old, 1,499 Lantvia and one Ersatz reservist. Chapter 4 Section 2 Casualties in 1925, Edmonds recorded that the Belgians had suffered a great number of casualties from 15 to 25 October, including 10,145 wounded. British casualties from the 14th October to the 30th November were 58,155, French losses were 86,237 men, and of 134,315 German casualties in Belgium and northern France, from 15 October, 24th of November, 46,765 losses were incurred on the front from the list to Gale Velt, from the 30th October to the 24th November. 
In 2003, Beckett recorded 50,000 to 85,000 French casualties, 21,562 Belgian casualties, 55,395 British losses and 134,315 German casualties. In 2010, Sheldon recorded 54,000 British casualties, circa 80,000 German casualties, that the French had many losses and that the Belgian army had been reduced to a shadow. Sheldon also noted that Colonel Fritz von Lorsberg had recorded that up to the 3rd of November, casualties in the 4th Army were 62,000 men and that the 6th Army had lost 27,000 men, 17,250 losses of which had occurred in Army Grupp Fabek from the 30th October to the 3rd November. Chapter 4 Section 3 Subsequent Operations Winter operations from November 1914 to February 1915 in the Ypres area, took place in the attack on White Sheet. A reorganization of the defense of Flanders had been carried out by the Franco-British from 15 to 22 November, which left the BIF holding a homogeneous front from Givenchy to White Sheet, 21 miles to the north. Joffrey arranged for a series of attacks on the Western Front, after receiving information that German divisions were moving to the Russian Front. The 8th Army was ordered to attack in Flanders and French was asked to, to participate with the BIF on 14 December. Joffrey wanted the British to attack along all of the BIF front and especially from Warnerton to Mazines, as the French attacked from Wycheek to Hollebeck. French gave orders to attack from the list to Warnerton and Hollebeck with two and three corps, as four and Indian corps conducted local operations, to fix the Germans to their front. French emphasized that the attack would begin on the left flank, next to the French and that units must not move ahead of each other. The French and the 3rd Division were to capture White Cheat and Petty Boys, then Spanbrook Molen was to be taken by two corps attacking from the west and three corps from the south, only the 3rd Division making a maximum effort. On the right the 5th Division was only to pretend to attack and three corps was to make demonstrations, as the corps was holding a 10 miles front and could do no more. On the left, the French 16 Corps failed to reach its objectives and the 3rd Division got to within 50 yards of the German line and found uncut wire. One battalion took 200 yards of the German front trench and took 42 prisoners. The failure of the attack on Wycheek resulted in the attack further south being cancelled but German artillery retaliation was much heavier than the British bombardment. Desultory attacks were made from 15 to 16 December which, against intact German defences and deep mud, made no impression. On the 17th of December, 16 and 2 Corps did not attack, the French 9 Corps sapped forward a short distance down the Menin Road and small gains were made at Klein Zillebeck and Bix Scoot. Joffrey ended attacks in the north, except for operations at Arras and requested support from French who ordered attacks on the 18th of December along the British front, then restricted the attacks to support of 16 Corps by 2 Corps and demonstrations by 2 Corps and the Indian Corps. Fogg impeded the Arras attack and a German counterattack against 16 Corps led 2 Corps to cancel its supporting attack. Six small attacks were made by the 8th, 7th, 4th and Indian divisions, which captured little ground, all of which was found to be untenable due to mud and water logging, Franco-British attacks in Flanders ended.